Hello and welcome to today's lesson on particle decays, which is part of the particles and radiation topic in AQA A-level physics. In today's lesson, we're going to look at understanding if particle decays occur. So if we're being successful and learned in today's lesson, we should be able to describe the properties of particles which must be conserved in particle decays, understand the property of strangeness, look at how strangeness relates to different particle decays, which is part of the following part of the AQA A level physics specification in particles. So we're going to look at the classification of particles and the application of conservation laws. So we can summarize the particle zoo properties with the following table. That leptons, which are fundamental, have a lepton number of 1 and a baryon number of 0. An antilepton, which is also fundamental, has a lepton number of minus 1 and a baryon number of 0. A baryon has 3 quarks and has a lepton number of 0 and a baryon number of 1. An antibaryon, which is 3 antiquarks, has a lepton number of zero and a baryon number of minus one. A meson, which is one quark, one antiquark, has a lepton and baryon number of zero. Anti-mesons do not exist as they're just mesons. And bosons or exchange particles also have a lepton number or baryon number of zero. Now you've got to memorize these key facts for your examination. Now in addition, we can also consider the different forces that different particles experience. So it's important to note that the weak force acts between all quarks, so all hadrons and leptons. The strong interaction will only act between hadrons, things made from quarks. The electromagnetic force acts between all charged particles, and the gravitational force has such a little effect it does not get considered for particles. Now these forces or interactions are exerted between objects with the exchange of virtual particles or bosons, and the properties of the boson give the properties of the force. Now remember, it's a key important idea to understand that only hadrons experience the strong interaction, which is the true definition of a hadron. Now it's been observed in nature that exotic heavier particles over time change into lighter more stable particles. So this process is called a particle decay and a particle decay is caused by an exchange of an exchange particle. Now this process is similar to nuclear decay which we looked at previously but here instead of the particles gaining stability by uh, being emitted out of the nucleus here the particles are changing from one type to another type. So particle decays occur as the particle Particles tend to exist as low energy, more stable particles. The particles want to be more stable, which is the idea of entropy. So after heavier, unstable particles are made in high energy situations, they decay into lighter, more stable particles. Now the heavier particles do not have to decay back to the more stable particles that produce them, but as there are many decay pathways which are based on probability. So remember, if no work is done into a system, okay, the particles will tend back to more stable states. Now particle physics can examine the different particle decays possible and use this to understand how the fundamental forces work. Because let's think about this. Why are some decay pathways taken by particles? What rules do particle decays obey and what properties must be conserved? So for a particle decay in, to occur in the universe, the following quantities need to be conserved between the particles before and after the decay. So the total energy mass before must equal the total energy mass afterwards. The total momentum before must equal the total momentum afterwards. The total charge before must equal the total charge afterwards. The total baryon number before must equal the total baryon number afterwards. And the total lepton number before must equal the total lepton number afterwards. Now if all of these properties are conserved in the decay, then the decay is observed in the universe. If a property is not conserved, we say the decay does not occur due to a violation of that property. So for example, the decay does not occur due to lepton number violation. Now it's always assumed that at A level, that energy, mass and momentum need to be conserved, but you never need to calculate them. Now you must prove that the charge, the baryon number and the lepton number are conserved in a particle decay. So an example of a particle decay is shown as the following. A proton can decay decay into a neutron, a positron and an electron neutrino. Now you'll always be given the decay you'll be examining okay, in your assessment, in your examination question. Now to check if the decay occurs, we've got to draw something called a property table. And you should always draw a property table to solve these problems. So you're going to consider charge, lepton number, baryon number before the decay and after the decay. So in the top row, we're going to consider if charge is conserved. So the overall before must equal 
equal the overall after on this row for charge to be conserved. In this row, we're going to look to see if the lepton number is conserved. So the overall number before must equal the overall number afterwards. And on the last row, we're going to consider if the barrier number is conserved. So the overall before equals the overall afterwards. Now, all rows must be conserved for a decay to take place. So let's place our values in for each of the um, particles. You can see in the decay, so we know our charge lepton number and barrier number for a proton, neutron, positron, and an electron neutrino. We then tabulate the overall before and the overall afterwards, and we check to see if these values have been conserved. So in this example, the charge before is one and the charge afterwards is one, so it is conserved. The lepton number before is zero and the lepton number afterwards is zero, so it is conserved. And the barrier number before is one, so the barrier number afterwards is one, therefore it is conserved. Now it's important to note you need to recognize what family a particle belongs to and then deduce its properties based on that which does take practice so for example you should know that a proton is a baryon so will have a baryon number of one and a lepton number of zero now you can if you want to abbreviate the properties in your table to q l and b now it's important to note as well that when all values are conserved the particle decay occurs in the universe now this example is beta plus decay this decay occurs by the weak force we know this as the particles are changing type and leptons are involved, so it's a slow decay process. Now, when we carried this out and looked at the laws of particle decays, there were several issues with this, because when we analyzed the conservation laws for the barrier number, lepton number, and the charge, okay, it looked that particle decays should happen according to the previous theory, but were never actually observed. So there must be another quantity which needs to be conserved in a particle decay, because according to previous conservation laws, certain decays should happen, but are never observed. So this indicates to us that a number of particle decays should happen, but do not, so our laws of physics are incomplete. And there was a second issue as well. Certain particles, such as kaons, were created easily in particle collisions, yet decayed much more slowly than expected for their large masses. So they should be decaying by the strong interaction, but instead were decaying by the weak interaction. So they were being produced in a fast interaction by the strong force, however they were decaying very slowly by the weak force. Now according to the previous particle physics, physics laws, this should not happen, but it does. So K on production was, occur was observed to happen very quickly, but K on decay was observed to happen very slowly. So because we couldn't explain this with our previous laws of physics, this indicated that our laws of physics, considering the baryon number, lepton number, and charge, were incomplete. So how could we solve these problems in particle physics? So to explain away these problems, physicists invented a new particle property called strangeness. Now strangeness was postulated to be conserved in any interaction with the strong, but does not need to be conserved in the weak interaction. It's literally strange. So this explained why certain decays did not occur. They did not conserve strangeness. Now this explained why certain decays, such as kaon decay, took a lot longer to occur because as they don't conserve strangeness, they can only decay by the weak interaction. Now some physicists actually believe strangeness to be a fudge on the particle model due to a lack of fundamental understanding. It's like a way in which to explain something which we don't really understand by inventing this new property. So in a particle decay, the following properties must be conserved. The charge, the baryon number, the lepton number, and the strangeness. Now rules one to three, the charge, baryon number, and lepton number do not fully explain why some particle decays are never observed in the real world, even though they conserve the first three properties. So Mary Gelman and Kajiko Nishima came up with a new property called strangeness. Strangeness. Now, strangeness must be conserved in decays, but this only applies to decays by the strong interaction. In weak interactions, the strangeness can change by plus one or minus one or be conserved, change by zero. So it's important to note that this idea was used to explain why certain particles such as kaons were created easily in particle collisions, yet decayed much more slowly than expected for their large masses. Now, noting that collisions seem to always produce pairs of these particles, it was postulated that a 
new conserved quantity called strangeness was preserved during their creation by the strong interaction but not conserved in their decay by the weak interaction. So it's important to note that strangeness is conserved during the strong and electromagnetic interactions but not during the weak interactions. So consequently the lightest particles containing a strange quark cannot decay by the strong interaction because it needs to conserve strangeness but cannot. Instead it must decay by the much slower weak interaction so that it doesn't have to conserve strangeness and change a strange quark into a more stable quark. This is why decays are slower than expected. So just to clarify, Gelmer proposed that particles which have, have, can have a strangeness property. Now, if they do have a strangeness property, all decays occur through the weak interaction. They decay into pions only, which we will call a kaon. They do not decay into pions, okay, which have different rest masses, which are greater than the protons' rest mass, and therefore decay into protons and pions, and therefore they must be created in pairs. Now, in our modern understanding, strangeness is conserved during the strong and electromagnetic interactions, but not during the weak interactions. So, consequently, the lightest strangeness particles kaons cannot decay by the strong interaction and must decay by the much slower weak interaction. Now in most cases these decays change the value of strangers by one unit. So this is why kaons are easy to produce but are difficult to, to decay into other particles. They can be produced by the strong interaction but they can only decay by the weak interaction. However this doesn't necessarily hold in second order weak reactions where there's mixtures of K0 and anti-K0 mesons. All in all the amount of strangers can change in a weak, in, uh, weak interaction by plus one, zero, or minus one. So to clarify, Gelman solved the chaos problem in physics by inventing a new particle property for all particles, strangeness. Now, strangers must be conserved in the strong interaction, but can change by plus or minus one in the weak interaction. Now, this was originally just a bookkeeping device that helped explain the decay patterns of the new particles into the old, familiar particles. There was no underlying and physical meaning to strangers. However, a few years after Gelmer proposed this, he actually also discovered that all baryons and mesons were made out of quarks. He then realised that one quark was causing all this strange behaviour, so it was called the strange quark. And this is why the weak interaction does not have to be conserved, okay, does not have to conserve the strangest quantity, because the weak force can cause quarks to change type, and so therefore, if it causes a strange quark to turn into a different type of quark, or vice versa, then strange is not conserved. Now, however, to this day, in 2020, 2019, we still don't know why this strange quark acts differently to the other quarks. We still don't have a fundamental understanding of what strangeness is. So to clarify, to explain why certain particle decays were not observed, a strangeness number was introduced for each particle and antiparticle. Non-strange particles like the proton, neutron, pions, all the leptons were assigned a zero strangeness. Now, strangeness is all always conserved in the strong interactions but can change by zero plus one or minus one in the weak interaction so it's postulated that if the strangest number changes by plus one or minus one the decay can only occur by the weak interaction only if the strangest occurs by more than plus or minus one the decay does not happen if the strangest number is conserved this decay can happen via either the weak or the strong interaction so hopefully in this lesson we can understand the application of the conservation laws for charge, baryon number, lepton number and strangers to particle interactions and therefore we can recognise that energy and momentum are conserved in interactions. We understand the concept of strange particles and strange particles are particles that are produced through the strong interaction and decay through the weak interaction, kaons. The strangeness is a quantum number to reflect the fact that strange particles are always created in pairs and we have a conservation of strangers in strong interactions but strangers can change by zero plus one or minus one in weak interactions so if we've been successful and learned in today's lesson we should be able to describe the properties of particles which must be conserved in particle decays understand the property of strangeness and look at how strangers relate to different particle decays i hope you've enjoyed today's lesson on particle decays which is part of the particles and radio topic in AQA A-level physics. Thank you very much for listening and have a lovely day.